so Alicia, can we maybe move to this that we talked about earlier, um, and, and we've the, the card trial, sure. and so and and what's the implication? And it goes back to our comments about the switching, and perhaps the pervasiveness that we see oftentimes of switching one oral AR for another one. Uh, tell us about the card trial, which was very important at ESMO 2019. Sure. So. The CARD trial included patients with metastatic CRPC who had received docetaxel chemotherapy and one of the AR targeted agents previously and had continued progression. It was interesting, they could have progression by PSA, they could have progression by pain or clinical features or by radiographic progression or any combination of those, but it wasn't necessarily just radiographic progression. Patients also had to have not been treated with an AR targeted agent for greater than 12 months. So it was a specific population that seemed to have a more aggressive phenotype, or at least a phenotype that was maybe not as sensitive to really AR targeted therapies. Um, they were randomized to treatment with cabazitaxel, actually at the standard dose um, from the initial label, 25 milligrams per meter squared. They were given Nulasta as well. Um, versus the other AR targeted agent that they had not previously received. And they were followed for radiographic progression as well as for overall survival. What was really interesting is that it was, it was very clear that cabazitaxel had a, a very um, demonstrable benefit in terms of radiographic progression free survival as well as overall survival in this trial as compared to that second AR targeted agent. And the second AR targeted agent had radiographic progression sometime about two and a half months was, was really the, the duration of that, which, which suggests that it was at the first scan essentially that people were, were pretty massively progressing or at least 50% of the patients were, were progressing at that first point. Um, it, it was interesting that we heard quality of life also seemed to be better in the patients treated with cabazitaxel, perhaps because the disease was better controlled. Um, and there was also uh, a better pain response in those, in those patients. And the other thing I found really interesting is that there were more grade five events in patients treated with the AR targeted agents than with cabazitaxel, because we think a lot about the toxicity of cabazitaxel and in the, in the US, the label is actually 20 milligrams per meter squared for most patients. And certainly we can start with that and increase if we want to. But most patients, at least in my clinic, we start at the 20 um, milligram per meter squared dose rather than the 25. So, even at the 25 milligram per meter squared, there were more grade five events in the AR targeted agents. So this suggested to me and, and really um, is a reason, one of the reasons for my comments before on switching mechanism of action, um, that AR agents back to back are not, are not gonna be so effective. And at the same meeting, the same ESMO 2019 meeting, we saw, I don't know if it was just before the card data or maybe it was just after, we saw Maha Hussein present the profound study, phase three trial. It was selected for patients with DNA repair defects. These patients had MCRPC. They had progressed on uh, chemotherapy, at least one chemotherapy, at least one AR targeted agent, and they were randomized to treatment with Olaparib versus the second AR targeted agent. And we saw in those patients a very similar radiographic progression free survival for the AR targeted agent might have been about three and a half months. These were not patients who were selected to have a, a more rapid progression on, of, of, on an AR targeted agent. There was no requirement about 12 months on that AR targeted agent. And to me, this just drives home that message that AR after AR, despite what we do in the real world, which, which is what we do at this point, it's just not the right thing to do. Yeah, I think that's an, a, a very profound point and a uh, trial that also <laughs> So um, Pedro, any uh, thoughts about that? And I also want to, and then I'm gonna throw it back to Nancy about, you know, we could talk about PARPs in a second. No, I agree, I, I, I fully agree. And it's not a coincidence that we saw the, the CAR data to be published in one of the, you know, major journals used by all of us because it's really practice changing. Yeah. Um, all of us um, actually, you know, used to have patients who, you know, progressed on abiraterone and get on enzalutamide or vice versa. Actually, I should just mention the, the study by the Kim Shi actually ask the question prospectively. Is it yeah. better? Is the, does sequence matter, right? And the study is overall not for RPF, for the second RPFS. So meaning if you start ABI followed by ENZO, if you start ENZO followed by ABI, at the end, in terms of disease in the scans, with the second agent, there is no difference found. It's a small phase two trial, but it's a good concept because, yeah. but he put in on paper, we conduct a study that was a reflect, it was a consequence of what we were all doing in real life. And so just going back to CARD a little bit, just to say that, you know, is an European study and you know kudos to them because they were able to do it and the reason why I mentioned that we were just talking a little bit earlier today about you know what is really a third line CRPC 
uh, study in the sense that about uh, you know less than 20% of patients got uh, you know docet docetaxel in the castration sensitive setting, which means that most the majority of the patients have received uh, docetaxel and abiraterone or enzalutamide in the castration resistant setting. So these were patients who were treated perhaps pre uh, uh, sharted stampede uh, uh, data out there, um, and so. Uh, to me, that's relevant because I, you know, we, in our discussions with our colleagues in different places we work, uh, I do see treating physicians shifting uh, their, their, the way they see this disease and start using um, or sequence, uh, using cabazitaxel sooner rather than later right. after the data was presented. So I think it was very, very, very important data, and I'm glad that the study was done and uh, in in that way. I think I think the point that you're making is also the point that we have to make to the patient. Because it's easy, and as you said, most of us were doing do it. You know, go Abby, Enza, or Enza, Abby. Even you know, even though you know the response rate to the second one is like fifteen percent at best, we still did it, and a lot of it was because the patients were saying, "Well, I don't want to get chemotherapy. Isn't there another oral drug you can give?" Now you can go to the patient. Not only do you know the data, but you can share it with your patient and say, "Well, we could do that, but your response rate, your quality of life, surprisingly." and your pain will be better if we go straight to the chemotherapy because they're all assuming that their quality of life is going to be worse. And now we can say, no, no, we have data. Not only is your response rate going to be higher, but the quality of your life is going to be better. Yeah, so, and it's patient-reported data, too, which I think right. is most most compelling for patients. It's not just the physician, CTCAE, the adverse events that they've recorded. It's actually the patients themselves saying that it's better. 